and now the audio is rolling. So what you waiting for? I'm ready for you. Let's have us a good time. And I can be your secret lover, your designated shover. Let's have us a good time. I'm here to have a good time. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Lion's Den. So, you know what you're saying, huh? I do. Okay. We were going to just go into our shots. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's go into our shots. Mm -hmm. Let's take our shots first before we go into the wellness check. <laughs> Ain't shit changed. <laughs> All right. Wait, what, so what are we taking shots of today? I feel like we're on like, like a cooking show, like a cooking with like, So what are we taking shots of today? Today we have uh, a vodka. You have to do a corny smile with it. You have to do like, mm. today, you, you know, you gotta give like infomercials. Today, okay. like that? Yeah. Okay. Today we have vodka. Mango pineapple vodka. We like flavors. Um, <laughs> I can't wait for shit. Okay. But yes, yeah, so we're gonna take a shot. These, these are the shots, and the drink is an um, orange jubilee-ish fragranced drink. Mm -hmm. Fragranced? That's what I said. Okay. Essenced, excuse me. Let me say essenced. Okay, because I'm like, a fragrance is a smell, but. You can smell it too, can't you? <laughs> Fair, Fair enough. enough. Fair enough, okay. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, mm. Today actually would have been the perfect day to do like our toast, oh, yeah. but. My okay. pants. Nah, I've got, I've got, I got a stain from the back of my, my car on my gray pants and so I don't want to stand up but Gerald's outfit is really cute today and I really feel like it would have been the perfect time to actually yeah. do even though my outfits are really usually cute but well today it's extra cute we'll say oh, that. thank you you're welcome that's so sweet <laughs> okay look right there in yeah mm -hmm. then I can throw I don't know if it's because of the spicy chicken is it just lingering right there mm -hmm. probably mm. just gonna Wash this down a little bit. Yeah. Clear, cleanse the palate. Hmm? Like cleanse the palate with more alcohol. <laughs> so yeah, so let's start off, like of course, how, how, how the hell are you? For you. Yeah, yeah, how the hell are you? So I'm doing well. Um, works great. Um, I'm feeling really good today. Oh, I'm gonna go see Kid Fury, comedy special. Show is that today? Up. That's today. What time? Seven. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't think I told you what time, but I did tell yeah, you. Yeah, you told that me was... that you were going, but I didn't know it was today and I didn't know what oh. time. Like, you just told me that you were going. I didn't know. <laughs> okay, I know. it's fine. Well. Yeah, it'll be fine. We're good. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited about that. Um, oh, I also found my butterfly chain. Yes. Yesterday. Yesterday? Where was it? Because it's another one of those, why didn't I look there? Mm -hmm. It was in the pocket of one of my jackets. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, that happens. Yeah. It happens all the time where you search high and low for everything, but then you didn't think to check the middle. Exactly. Like, you're checking high, you're checking low. It's like, right here, I yeah, because I was <laughs> right searching where everywhere. <laughs> I was looking at all my bags. I was looking under the bed. Mm -hmm. I was, yeah, I was looking in the car. When, lo and behold, it's in my closet, in my jacket pocket. Mm -hmm. And I just searched it, could search there because I'm like, it has to be somewhere. And I wanted to, the outfit that I had on yesterday, I was like, I need to have the butterfly on. And then I found it and I was happy. And then I, I ended up getting see you at all butterfly. yesterday. You didn't? Mm. Hmm. Sucks for you. No pictures are there. Evidence is not there. I was okay. cute, though. I'm sure you were. In my little leotard situation. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I've been pretty good, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. How are you? I have... 
I mean, there really is anything new going on with me at mm. all, to be honest. Like, it's just the same thing all the time. Same so, shit, different day. Yeah, so nothing, nothing really new. Um, oh, I mean, hmm. No, that's not really new. I was mm. going to say, like, um, something about, like, well, it's something I have to tell you, but it's not something that's podcast worthy, but I do want to tell you about it. Don't tell me. Is it long? Yeah, okay, which is why I'm not going to tell part. you about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're working, we're, oh, and we're also organized today. Yes. I'm so excited Part, Well, that. he's more organized than I am. I can tell you that right now. I mean, well, you, you're, you're a quick thinker, you, you know? Yeah, So usually. Yeah. Okay. You're wearing your hair different this time. I am wearing my hair differently. Um, it's still not done though. Like I would love for you guys to see me with my hair actually done, where I've got a fresh retwist, a fresh lineup, etc. But usually it's a do rag on my head, or like the last episode, my hair was down, but it, you know, that wasn't nowhere near fresh, and now this is up in this little ponytail situation. But you know, I think it's really cute whenever you put your hair in a ponytail and then have the thing things dangling Mm -hmm. I think it's really cute oh thank you I appreciate it I think that we can go ahead and foray ourselves into Spit or Swallow let's do it yeah you know are you guys ready Mm -hmm. swallowed up have you ever been swallowed up have you gone through a time of swallowing first off comment below or not below put in the comments if you spit or swallow I would like to know that just in case I encounter you. Um, are you gonna, you wanna go first? Or I can go first? Yes, you can go first. Okay, so my first spit or swallow, mm-hmm. <laughs> couldn't get it out. <laughs> couldn't spit it out there, mm-hmm. <laughs> struggle. Um, is day drinking. Huh. Oh, I, I swallow day drinking. Mm-hmm. I, like, I like to day drink, even though I don't do it a lot, but yeah. I, when I do, it's usually a pretty, it's a situation. Yeah, it's a fun situation to do that. Yeah, because like you get to, you go like, go ahead. I was going to jump in, but no, 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 no. no. Just so like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so because you get to like, of course I swallow. Duh. Um, we're day drinking right now, actually. Exactly. Um, but you get to like drink, have fun, feel the vibes, but then also, and you can actually get drunk, drunk, not drunk, drunk, um, during the day and have uh, plenty of time to recover for your day tomorrow. Which I guess is why there's a thing called brunch here in Atlanta. Um, It happens all over. (laughs) Um, But yeah, people get bottomless mimosas, get drunk real quick, and do Sunday fun day, get back home around like, well, some people, I won't say all, because some people be out all night. Mm -hmm. But some people get back home around like six, seven, be drunk, do their things, and do their things. Um, <laughs> and then are able to like wake up and feel refreshed the next day because their bodies actually had time to recover and to mm-hmm. sleep. So I love day drinking. Yeah. When I get to do it. Yeah. I feel like day drinking is definitely something that is sometimes I can hear every swallow I know right I, I can hear like my spit and shit but anyway um, did you crunch on that ice and I was like oof I think that day drinking usually for most people forays itself into night drinking like they'll start mm-hmm. in the day and then mm-hmm. they'll just still be drinking at night which is which will explain why so many people end up like Stupid drunk. Yes. By the nighttime, like they're like being carried out of the yeah. club because, like, because they've been drinking since like five o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. No, not since five. Since twelve o'clock. You know, brunch. Mm. Brunch happened. On Sundays, yeah. I meant like oh, just in general, like okay. on like a Friday or a, you know, something like that. Like they're probably get off work and immediately make a cocktail, mm. and then just let that bleed on into the That's night. It's called happy hour. Because, you know, after Indeed. the stress of the day, after the stress of work, yeah, you want to feel happy <laughs> immediately. So, you yeah, go grab yeah, And to be honest, I mean, I really have always kind of wonder why they call it happy hour. Yeah. I just made that up. I don't yeah, know that's I, true, Yeah, I know that wasn't like a legitimate yeah. explanation of it, but I, I am curious as to why they call it happy hour. Because it's the one hour where the drinks are cheaper. And it's funny because sometimes happy hours drink, aren't drink. just one hour. Like sometimes yeah. the happy hour is like, two hours. I'm like, it's like three to six. Yeah, or or yeah. Like I'm like, that's uh, multiple hours. But okay, happy sure. hours. Happy <laughs> hours. Yeah. Um, okay. So 
So I'm gonna sh- I'm, I'm gonna start off with something very kind of simple. Um, I would say because sp- it, it kind of forays from the day drinking thing. So spit or swallow gin. Like this. Oh, okay. Um, I would probably. I mean, I'm gonna like swallow any alcohol as long as it's not taco vodka. Um, or Everclear. I was um, just about to say Everclear, like, yikes. What the fuck? Um, that is flammable. Um, so, yeah, I would swallow it. I don't drink it that much, though. Yeah, and it's, I, it's I, a sneaky bitch. And too. I only brought it up because I've been I've been hearing about it a lot lately. Like a lot of people have been asking me about gin lately. Where they're like, "Oh, do you drink gin? Do you drink gin? Mm-hmm. Drink gin?" And I'm like, for me, gin and like scotch and stuff like that. I feel like those are those are the things where I'm like, there are certain drinks that I feel like I. Like, for instance, I, I could do gin, of course, because mm. gin is usually in a Long Island. So I can do gin when it's in that. But I feel like gin by itself, I would probably spit that. Oh, you mean like as a shot or like as yeah, just like, a drink? Like a, sh- like a shot or a drink. Like, like for instance, like a gin and tonic. Like, would you do a gin and tonic? I would, yeah. Um, probably, I would I don't, do a gin and tonic. I don't think I would. Snoop Dogg said gin and juice. I do a gin and juice. Yeah. Um, I, I think... I will. I, I just don't often get it, but mm-hmm. I would definitely drink gin with something. I would probably not want to shot, take a shot of gin, but to me, gin is like hidden under all the other flavors um, of the juice and that's or something. What I'm saying. Like that's why, like, I feel like I could do gin with other things. Yeah, yeah okay. but like, gin and tonic ain't nothing but gin and yeah. like club soda. Like that's true. <laughs> that's why I would not want that. I'm okay, so I might do a gin and tonic with lime juice or something like that in it. Okay, but yeah, okay. Because we're not shining gin. We're not. We don't want to just taste Mm-mm. gin. I'm not taking no shot of gin. Nope. <laughs> Okay. And I'm not doing gin on the rocks either. Not on the rock. Why would you do gin on the rocks? People do that. People literally would sit and just That's drink crazy. a whole cup of gin. A whiskey on the rocks and drink that. I, I could do that. I could do a whiskey on the rocks too. Like, especially because, um, like, Crown mm-hmm. apples and all the flavors. Oh, I've done that there. a lot. Like, I've it's, been walking around yeah. for, like, I've and gone to events and everything where I will literally have just literally a cup of Crown. Yeah. Just walking around, just, just sipping at the whole mm-hmm. night. Yeah, yeah, I've done um, that. Yeah. So, okay. Um, spit or swallow, Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So, see, so, so, so typically, typically we like to stray away from being shady on the, Emma on the Lions <laughs> Day, but. Hmm. <laughs> Girl, because she has been doing Caitlyn Jenner. First of all, Caitlyn Jenner has been doing the most since she first like became Caitlyn Jenner. Like the most. Well, I don't think, and I don't think in the very very beginning she was. I think. What do you mean? No, she was like because like in the very beginning, like when she first transitioned and became, you know, went from. When she decided to live in her truth, right? Mm -hmm. She's, you know. (laughs) Speaking out against gay marriage and all yeah, this no, stuff, so I'm like, baby, I'm you thinking, are a trans woman. Right. She, she does not, and she, I don't even think she. Well, okay, she. Okay, for me, in the very beginning, um, I saw a person living in their truth finally mm-hmm. after years. That's initially what I saw, mm-hmm. um, and I was happy for that. I was still a little like. Hmm. Okay, still watching you, but mm-hmm. congratulations, girl. Um, but as time went on and we saw like how she felt about gay rights, how she like recently, um, Trans Visibility Day is March 31st, right? Mm. So it's the same day every single year, March 31st. It just so happened that this year, um, Easter fell on March 31st. Which is odd, because Easter is usually in April. That right. threw me off. But yeah, okay. I was like, mm, okay. Cool. But shout out to y'all. Um, and she decided to speak out about, or just have this 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 attitude towards um, it being Easter Sunday and Joe Biden saying something about trans, trans people on that day. As I didn't well. see that. 
She had a problem with that? She did, yes. See, once again, that further proves my point as to why I'm spitting her out. Yeah, it's giving (laughs) very much so a spit because, like, and I I think it's because of the privilege that she has. Mm -hmm. Because she isn't like typical trans women where they have to, they go through a process. They have, go through a struggle. She already had the money. She mm-hmm. already knew what the doctor is coming because look at the family, you know? Yeah. I mean, shout out to the doctors, whatever. Um, excuse me. But, so she was able to go in hiding, whatever, and go and do her things and come out as, and do this whole photo shoot mm-hmm. and come out as a, a new woman. A new woman. Yeah. Yes. Um, when but, most but before that, she had already had the opportunity to live her life previously, of course, as a, you know, as identifying as a male, mm-hmm. live your entire life in this spotlight of, you know, being with like an ex pro athlete yeah. and then, you know, a, a Olympic yeah, gold medalist. Yeah. And having like all I'm of sure these. Just, you know, all this privilege uh, mm-hmm. afforded to you. And so then later on in your life, when you, I guess, have your epiphany and your revelation of who you feel that you are supposed to be, and then you transition, and it, it's almost like by the time Caitlyn transitioned, she had already had so much more privilege than most other trans yeah. women and trans men have in this country. People, period. Yeah, and, and, and it's very much like for for you to be someone who want, who comes out as trans and you want everybody else to accept you for who you are and you want everybody else to get on board with you and your transition and your um, your, your, your new life, your resurgence right. into this um, new identity how in the world can you be somebody who is against gay marriage? How can you be somebody who is against certain um, civil rights battles and things like that? It, 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 makes, it makes no sense to me, but I feel like it makes all the sense to her. Of course, it makes all the sense like, in the world to most people who think that way. Like, yeah, like people, people you don't, who, they don't have to like, like it's just like about black, It's just like black people and what's worse, black and gay people who like support Donald Trump. Someone who yeah. has openly spoken out against things about sexuality and you know trans awareness and all that. Like, like he, he is, yeah, he is someone who has constantly spoken out and shown what kind of despicable person he is. Mm-hmm. And so, for you to be someone who is a part of not one but two minority, minority yeah. mar- marginalized categories. To stand up and say that you support this man is completely asinine to me. I don't understand that because you might. <laughs> really? I'm sorry. In front of my I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's like to, to, that's very asinine to me to to be able to be someone who is a part of the same group of people that he is disrespecting and 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 and, and in some ways attacking. And then for you to be someone who supports him, that's I think so it's because crazy to me. If you create a world or, an, well, this is just my thinking. If you create a world or an environment where people are constantly stressed um, with finances, with um, battling racial things, with uh, just just constantly stressed and in this state of uh, the state of being of being stressed mm-hmm. um, all the time and. I think that he has been able to like dangle some food a little bit to where people are like, oh, okay. He gave me, um, he, because of him, I got $1,200 mm-hmm. um, just now. Okay, that sounds great. That, that'll help me in the moment. Maybe not long term, but it'll help me in the moment. Um, because I think a lot, and I, I think this is the frustration that many people have with Democrats, particularly the Democratic Party. Get your shit together, girl. Um, they, a lot of things don't seem to be getting done, mm. and people are people are frustrated. And so when someone dangles um, a piece of meat in front of you and gives it to you, 
Um, even though it's like a small piece of meat, it's not really gonna help you grow. Um, it's very it, to me. It reminds me very much of the eighty twenty rule when they talked about why did I get married. It's like you that twenty percent looks real good when you're not getting it. Yeah. But then when you think about the eighty percent of the bullshit that you're getting yeah. from this person is like why would you want this person in your life when it's like all they're offering you is 20 percent right they're, they're only offering you 20 percent yeah, like, like you all, all you're seeing is that you, you're getting something yeah that's all you're seeing is that you're yeah. getting something that you haven't gotten in a while or that you haven't gotten ever and that's all you're really focusing on yeah which is so, never so, this, that, to me that's never the way to go like you, you you always want to look at the, the whole picture I, and, and not which just is a piece why of it. i get like what how people feel and how they're making those types of decisions, even though I definitely do not agree with them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I can, I can just see it happening. Yeah. Like I, I, 2024 November, I can imagine what's already going to happen. Jesus. Like anyway. Yeah. Spit or swallow soul toucher. Uh, swallow. Okay. Y'all know I always have to so I nice. said this last episode My <laughs> Spirit Swallow Will always Always have a content creator in it He is so nice and Yeah like, man He's gorgeous I fucking love him He's like If you're watching this Um <laughs> When you see me mm. Um I watched it I'm looking at that camera huh? Probably Yeah mm, damn. But it's okay Okay um, but yeah, because he's super sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, his videos are fire. Um, when he sees us now, he always comes up and says, hey. Exactly. I like when there are people who are like, yeah, people know who I am and I'm all over the internet and I make all this content, I do all this stuff, but that doesn't change the fact that I'm still a real person. Right. And I'm going to come and say, hey, if I know you. Mm-hmm. I, I've always loved that Soul Toucher is not one of those people. Like he, you know, mm-hmm. real cool, real um, approachable, real, um, real nice, real sweet, and then maybe he'll touch your back when he sees you in the club. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you when he came up behind me, and I was like, "Who is this behind me? Right. Who is it? What's gonna get spoiled? I'm like, watch out! Don't touch me like that. You're cute ass. <laughs> Take you back to the house <laughs> in the parking lot. You will get the Why double special stuff in here. Look. Like, Go back to my notes. Because I we love the organization so of the notes. We you know? love that. Love it. Um, okay, spit or swallow. Georgia's public school sex education. Oh, that's specific. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really just had public school sex education, but I want, I don't know about everybody else's. I know about Georgia. Or Clayton County specifically. You know what? It's been so long since I've been in school. I don't know how to answer that. But I just know when I was in school. Yeah, that's what I was actually like trying to go for. Like when we were. Okay, yeah. So back in the day, long years ago. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Decades ago. Um, Literally. No. Yeah. Because my twentieth, my twentieth high school reunion is coming up soon. But honestly, I would spit it because. I feel like the education system in general never really prepares you for real life things. Yeah. Like the education system, like when you do when you're taking sex ed classes, they yeah, they touch on most stuff, but they focus so much on like, you know, oh well just you know, they they focus way too much on like either using condoms or being abstinent. That's what the, those are two things they really focus on. They don't give you enough information about um, what happens if you can, you know, yeah. if, if you contract HIV. Because like they, 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 don't, they don't tell you about the medications and this and that, and the options you have. They didn't tell us. Well, at least they didn't tell us. So okay, I'm gonna spit. Um, I had my first STD long years ago. Mm-hmm. And the I was comparing it to the images that I saw um, during the sex ed classes, mm-hmm. and what I saw on myself, and what because it was it, it was gonorrhea chlamydia. Did I say that? No, you just said first STD. Okay, it was gonorrhea chlamydia. One of those. I guess now they can they say STI instead of STD. Yeah, STD. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not a disease. It's actually an, an infection. infection. Yeah. Um. So. When I had that, I didn't know, because looking at myself and looking at the pictures that, or remembering the pictures that 
I was shown in sex ed, it wasn't, it didn't look like that. Mm-hmm. The pictures in sex ed were like to the extreme. Yeah. And so when I was experiencing symptoms and stuff and I'm looking at myself, I'm like, okay, my boyfriend at the time, and he gave it to me. Um, he kept saying that I had a UTI. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking like, oh, okay. That's why it hurts a little bit when I pee. Mm-hmm. Cause it's a UTI. Okay, that makes sense. I'll just like drink, they say drink cranberry juice or something like that, whatever. Um, go to the doctor. They're like, oh, you have chlamydia gonorrhea. And I said, er, I have a what? But it don't look like the picture. Mm-hmm. And so th- that's why, that's one huge reason one of the many reasons why I'm spitting it out because they're not going into depth. They're not. Yeah, they don't tell you that sometimes STIs don't have symptoms at all. Right. Like they don't. They, like the. It, well, it's they, not gonna look like the picture. I'm not gonna say they don't. They didn't. When we right, were right, in school, right. we did not get that type exactly. of education. And I am hoping and praying that y'all are getting that. Like those of you who are in school now, whether it's high school, college, whatever, I'm hoping hope you have had that. That they are now incorporating that into their sex ed, their sex education, you know, classes because that's important mm-hmm. information that is left out. Just like with everything else, just like with economics, just like with you know history. They always love to like leave stuff out that's very because pertinent because they to want, want you to focus lives. on abstinence and condoms. Of course, or did I don't know how they're doing it now. Yeah, but they just wanted you. you the best way they always said this at the end of the class. It was very the best way um, to avoid this is to be abstinent. Yeah, you know exactly. what it was giving. It was very much Mean Girls. It was like just don't have sex, okay? <laughs> like because if you have sex, you will get pregnant. Yeah, and die. Right. Like, like that's that's, that's, that's crazy. literally what our that's that's what our sex and that's why that scene was so funny in that movie because that's exactly how our sex ed teachers were. It was like just don't have sex. Just at don't all. have sex. Just don't do it. Okay. Just take to write down the definitions in this in this book and don't have sex. Yeah, and that's all. But it's like, but I'm horny. My <laughs> hormones are going crazy. Yeah, they, they, right they are, now. Like, of course, talking to about? a room full of like oh, yeah, hormonal children, teenagers, you know, teenagers. teenagers who are going through puberty, and you're like, yeah, just don't have sex. That's right. easier said than done. Because also, y'all know, because you're like a 30, 40 year old person who's <laughs> already been through your situation. And, and like y'all know, like if you tell someone to not do something, especially someone. Under the age of twenty five, yeah, some of that's that impressionable. Um, they're gonna do it mm-hmm. just because they want to know why they should. Yeah, because you're not actually telling me why. Yeah, because it's, it's almost like when a, with a kid, like where they have to like do things and learn. Like if you tell a five year old, like don't touch the stove because yeah. it's hot, they'll be like, curious. They is it thing. hot? I don't and know they if touch it, it and get burned. It's like now you know. Actually, now they you know it's don't hot. know if it's hot or not. Yeah, they don't know. You're so just telling them. You're them. telling them it's hot. But and, and to be honest, that 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 type of inquisitiveness is what I feel like I respect a lot when it comes to like kids. Oh and yeah. Even with For me, sure. and that's what I want the rest of the world to get to when it comes to living life. Is I want people to become more inquisitive mm-hmm. and stop just listening to what everybody else says. Oh well, my parents said this, and my pastor said that, and the government said this, so it's got to be true. No, how are you? Do Research, ask questions. Do your own research. Ask questions. Be inquisitive. That's one of the problems. That's one of the big problems with all. Did you say three of those? Was that three that you just said? Religion. Yeah. Government. Those yeah. Three. Religion. Government. Okay, and parental. <laughs> I was yeah. about to say I'm like, mm, I don't know if you said three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's one of the huge issues is that people will just believe it and trust it mm-hmm. just so that they, they don't have to worry blindly about blindly following people just, oh, for well, themselves they, you know. they, they must know what they're talking about because they, they are the in that position no mm-hmm. I'm, always the, I'm always one who's like wait a minute something don't sound right about like, that it's great that they're able to give information to you but even if they give information to you you can still go back and you like, can still research check. it and yeah. back check you'd be like let me just make sure that what you're because yeah. especially when you feel like something don't make sense because yeah. like if, you, if somebody tells you something and you're like wait what We're like gonna, de- definitely gonna, if, if you and that's the problem like where if somebody if you are asking someone a question and they are reluctant to answer that question nine times out of ten mm. it's because they know that they don't have an answer for you and that they are just regurgitating something somebody told them mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Alexis Rose. Um, spit or swallow plastic surgery. Oh, um, I okay. Me personally, right now, I would not swallow it for myself. But 
Um, for everyone else who decides that they want to do it, I will definitely swallow it. Um, mm. Mm, let me take it back. <laughs> um, Not you taking it back. Look. I will swallow it as long as it's not hurting them. Yes. I'll okay. Um, like now we know, don't be going to an alleyway to get some ass shots. We know that now. Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, that thing was happening and people were dying. Yeah. And I think it still does happen, which I'm sad that that's still happening. But yeah. But yeah, because I think it looks. Plastic surgery looks good on people, certain people. I'm gonna say people, because I don't wanna I don't wanna be shady. But it looks yeah. good on people. Um even and you know, even though I feel like sometimes people go too far mm-hmm. and then they be looking like, Who the fuck are you? You're a totally different person. Like what? Right. Um as long as they're not hurting themselves, as long as they're not um, in pain, as long as there's, there's not like silicone floating through their body, like as long as those things aren't happening, I'm, I'm gonna swallow it all day for them because it makes them feel happy. And also, I would never mind. Go ahead. So for me, it's kind of I, I, it's a bit of a double-edged sword for me. It's mm-hmm. like I have two kind of sides on it. Um, so double sided dildo. So it's yeah. So it's giving like the spit some of it, swallow some of it. Mm-hmm. Um, now for myself, I'm spitting it all the way out. Mm-hmm. Like for myself, I'm spitting it all the way. Out. I, I I will never get plastic surgery, and it's because for me, I I like the idea of growing old gracefully. I like the idea of me seeing. Like, slowly seeing what I'm going to look like as I'm getting older. Mm. I don't want anything to interrupt my aging process. I don't want anything to impede on, you know, my natural aging. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't. Because our bodies are going to change yeah, throughout like, the years. I don't, I don't, years, I, but... I, because then I don't want anything that'll be like, oh, okay, well, you only look like that because of this. Mm. Like, that's just my thing. I'm not downing anybody. Because I, I, I know plenty of people. I have, I have friends. I have you know acquaintances, clients, people I know who have gotten certain um, cosmetic enhancements and things like that. So it's not any type of shade or disrespect to them. It's just like I said, for me, I would never do that because I know for myself, I don't want to interrupt my own natural aging mm-hmm. process. Um, I've also heard that this is just a side note. I heard, heard that Botox helps with um, headaches. That's Interesting, heard, but. You can continue, sorry. <laughs> speaking of Botox, and, and speaking of Botox and me mentioning Alexis Rose earlier from Shit's Creek, it made me think about the scene where Ted was like, oh, we're just going to get some vaccines. It's just like getting Botox. And she was like, ew, Ted, what am I, 32? <laughs> and Why, I, take what? That, I take that scene so personally because I actually am 32, maybe 33 in July. And so when she said, I was like, what? I was like, 32 is the age you start getting plastic surgery. And right. For, and for some people, you, so a, lot, a lot of people actually start getting Botox much earlier than that. I've witnessed people who have gotten, you know, injections and, like, you know, I've heard fillers people, like, and stuff way before. Like, like, 12 years old. Or like, oh, I've never like, heard no, of Yeah, I've heard of people young. doing it Only young. people I know, I know, I, I, I feel like I've seen as young as, like, early 20s. I've, I don't, I don't know, think I've, I've seen, seen. I've heard of and seen teenagers. Like, oh, yikes. But anyway, right. like I said. No judgment, do your thing. Shout out to you, because whatever, you know, if you like it, I love it. Whatever mm-hmm. makes you happy and makes you feel good about yourself, go ahead with it. Just like he said, just make sure that you're not harming yourself. Yeah. Like, make sure that you're, you're fully informed on it and that you are making the right decision for you. And, yeah, you're doing it because you want to do it. And not, yeah, like, do it because you want to do it. Like, you and, and you alone. Yeah, like, don't it. be... Do, you know, getting plastic surgery because like, oh, this is gonna make me look like this for this Instagram or, or yeah. for you know somebody I'm trying to attract or the, the, those are the wrong reasons to be getting plastic surgery. If you want, if you as want, as long as you look in the mirror and you're like, damn, I look good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah, I love that. Yeah. So because it's, 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 it's the same thing about something like going to the gym. Like, yeah, people go to the gym sometimes for the wrong reasons because they're so they're trying so hard to look attractive for other people, which. 
of course, sometimes it's understandable because that's a natural human reaction when people want to look good for other people. They want to feel attractive. I don't attractive. think that's a natural. I think that's socialization. I, it, yeah, I know. But well, I mean, but it's definitely. It's a, but, well, yeah. and uh, you know what? You're right. It is a social thing. It's a, it's a, it's a social construct where, like, it. But I feel like it, it, it's because it's been something that has been happening for generations. I feel like it's become a, 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 a human norm now, where people just whether they realize it or not, even subconsciously, that people want to impress other people Mm. in some form or fashion. Because I would say for myself, um, sometimes, I know I definitely, like, all the time wear outfits or put outfits together because they make me feel good. Mm-hmm. But I also love getting the compliments too. Of course, yeah. You, 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 that, you, you know, you always love like, you know, the validation is now that's something that is natural. That's a psychological thing. Like when someone gives you a compliment, it releases that nice, like, oh, this is oh, like, mm-hmm. I was like, oh my God. Like, you know, good like job. compliments and and you know, someone telling you that you're attractive, someone telling you they like your outfit, someone telling you that you smell good. Tell us somebody telling you you smell good is a top tier compliment. Oh, I love that one. Um, and, tell me but that an I even that bigger people. compliment that I love, I love when people tell me about my energy. Mm-hmm. If someone tells me like, oh my God, your energy is so good, like that, that trumps every other compliment you could ever give me. Like if you tell me that my energy is good, I'm like, thank you so much. Like that is, Top tier, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the number one. It's up here. Yeah, you can't see it. Yeah, you can. You can see that. Okay. <clears throat> I didn't. Yeah. I have you done it. all three of yours? I have. Yeah. Oh, oh so we're did, done. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> we're done with Spitter Swallow. <laughs> Who would have uh, knew? Oh, yeah. Thought yeah. It? Okay. Um. And we're gonna take a quick break. Right? Yes, we are. We're gonna okay. take a quick break um, so we can back. come back and do. Gerald's segment. Let's get kinky. Let's get kinky. And I might have a refill too. A refill? What? This way, I ain't gotta buy that much when I go to um this comedy show. Oh, welcome back. Hot and spicy popcorn chicken from Publix is really good. <laughs> um, <laughs> with honey mustard. It's so yummy. Homemade honey mustard that we made. Oh, it, yeah. oh, you did a really good job with that, though. Thank you. That tastes really good. Thank you. Mm. We're back. And we're about to do what? Get kinky. Yeah. Can we get kinky tonight? I got so many things on my mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... I wanted to choose between two, but I can't do two, and so I'm gonna choose one um, because of time. And the producer said so. Screaming. <laughs> um, so this one is called. <laughs> I'm gonna sit, try to say it, and then I'm gonna spell it out for y'all. Um, Niz. Malagnia. Nisma, nismalagnia. Have any so idea? So you didn't look up the pronunciation before you No, I should have, right? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, it's, it's spelled K-N-I-S-M-O-L-A-G-N-I-A. Okay. And actually, what, what do you think it means? This is uh, like just a... <laughs> I haven't the slightest. That sounds like, sounds, way that sounds like something about. that you can like, I don't know, catch from a plant in the forest or something. I don't know. Catch from a plant in the forest. I don't know. Like you, 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 you eat like a poisonous plant. It's like, oh, now he has kids. I'm gonna get him lymphophilia. Like, I don't know. Miss Melania. Miss Melania. Niz Millennia. Niz Millennia. Niz Millennia. That's how you pronounce it. Okay. According to YouTube, which, you know, I can, I can do some deeper research on that because it's YouTube. Um, yeah, okay. But yeah, Niz Millennia is what we're going to say today. Okay. And that is the tickle fetish. Oh, the tickle fetish. Yes, okay. The tickle fetish. Have, have you ever been tickled? Like, no? Thought about it? No, because I don't like being tickled. Like, <laughs> I'm the person who will, like, <laughs> kick you if you tickle me. <laughs> yeah. Um,. I, so actually, a gentleman reached out to me mm-hmm. wanting to tickle me. 
Um, and I was like, sure. I'm never, because he was going to pay me to do it. <laughs> so I was like, to, to tickle me? Okay, cool. Um, I haven't done it yet, but I've been thinking about it. Mm. It's just, it's just distance. It's, it's just things that mm-hmm. are like preventing me or holding me back from doing it. Um, but I've seen a lot of videos. There's a, a, a person on Twitter. I think they're called like the Tickle Master or something. Mm-hmm. Um, they bring people on there, um, content creators on there, and just tickle them. Tickle their feet. Tickle under their arms. It's people, people use feathers and things like that. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. And you would never want to do it. No, I mean, I would it, do it for some money. The thing, no, I mean, I probably, I mean, yeah, if somebody offered to pay me, I might, but I feel like I, that's kind of like the fisting fetish. I kind of don't, I personally don't see the pleasure in that because, see, even like, even though tickling makes you laugh per se, mm-hmm. It's for me at least. It's a very painful laugh. Like I'm laughing oh, you know. because because it's like getting tickled. It's like your you entire your body is like stuff? yeah. Yeah, yeah it's you like just I, don't, muscles. I don't like that. It, it, it hurts. <laughs> it's painful. <laughs> like, do not tickle me, please. Cause, yeah, because um, this person he wants <clears throat> to tickle me. Almost to the point where I'm about to pee on myself. Yeah, he see. wants to do that. I mean, but it's good when he don't win. But yeah, yeah. So people, so I guess there's different extremes to it, mm-hmm. where um, people like to you know use feathers and things and like <laughs> cute things. Yeah. Um, and then it's to the point where people are tied up. I was just because actually say that. that's what like, he I'm, wants to do. Yeah. Most of them, that. most most of the videos I've seen of people doing the tickle. Um, the tickle fetish. I was gonna try Ms. to pronounce Ms. it. Melania. <laughs> <laughs> the unsureness of that pronunciation. But yeah, like I feel like for me, I've seen most of them be tied up. And I think mm-hmm. that of course typically the reason why they're tied up is because they know that they're like, gonna, without it, yeah. you're gonna be the feet and the and the arms are gonna be swinging. Somebody's gonna get hit. Someone's gonna get hit. Because that's Punch it's, the it's a natural reaction our bodies have to yeah. being tickled. Like we're like I our, like being tickled for like ten seconds. Like a cute, I good. mean, I feel like a cute tickle where like, you know, somebody walks up behind you and it's like, hey, and do like mm-hmm. a quick little tickle. That's uh, different because yeah. it's like, oh, all right. But then it's like to be tied up in a chair or on a bed or whatever and just be, and you can't, because first of all, not being able to move is already a thing for me. I have mm-hmm. claustrophobia and I don't like feeling like I can't move. That is going to immediately freak me out. And then also being tickled and not being able to move. It's not. It's not. Yeah, your thing. That's not. That's 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 not my lane. <laughs> I will definitely um, be paid to do it. I would, yeah. So that I'm just gonna say that. Um, yeah. Like I mean, I definitely. I'll I'll do it for you know. If I, I'm getting paid for it. You but want to me? Like just natural everyday pleasures. No. No. That's not, that's not my thing. Thanks so much. But as usual, very interesting um, fetish kink mm-hmm. that you have brought to us. Um, I find people's, I find kinks interesting in general, just because it's like different things that different people are like. Different strokes for different folks. Yeah, different things people are interested in where it's like, oh, this turns me on. This makes me, yeah, you know, hot. This really does something for me. And for and, 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 and just like how I'm like, well, I don't really get the fisting thing. I don't really get the tickle thing. But there are fetishes that I'm into that other people don't get, you know. And I think that's kind of like what makes it fun and interesting mm-hmm. is that there are things that a whole group of people like that another group of people are kind of like hmm what why like you know but it's great because it's like it's something that when you find other people who are also into that oh it's a it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a magical thing. yeah all right well that is our let's get kinky segment and when we come back we are going to be getting into our main topic for the day what is that topic you ask <sighs> you have to find out when you come back Boom. Yeah. <laughs> we are back. And blacker than ever. 
I don't know. Okay. <laughs> um, so now we are going to get into our main topic for today, which is going to be the topic of toxic masculinity. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do want to shout somebody out who sent me a message about this. Yes, yes. Um, his name is Randy. I went to middle school with Randy. So mm-hmm. shout out to you. Um, and his Instagram is Surly Aries. Okay. Shout out to well, you. Well, yeah, shout Go out ahead. to you for uh, suggesting this topic because this is definitely like, because when Gerald brought it to me, I'm like, oops. I have talked about this topic <laughs> linear many a bunch times, of so I have a lot Let's to say about it. it. Um, now we gotta make sure we don't do forty-five minutes of this. Yeah, I know it won't but, be. I mean, yeah. well, I'll try. I'll try because toxic masculinity has always been something to me that. Um, well, first off, what is it? Okay, well, toxic masculinity is just the. Over I'm trying to find a good way of wording this. It sounds like professional like and not shady. Yeah. Yes. Look professional up, and not shady. Because I can give yeah, you some people's yeah, names I, for examples. I, I, but I can give you an example. I can give you the, the definition that I hate, but we're gonna look up the actual professional politically so, correct definition. Toxic masculinity, cultural norms associated with men that are harmful to society and to men themselves. Toxic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a nice politically correct mm-hmm. definition. Right. But anyway, the definition that I would like to, you know, touch on is just people who put too much emphasis on masculinity and what they feel and, 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 and showing that it's better per se than femininity like and that's namely in um it happens a lot of course in the gay community but even in the straight community it's a thing because it kind of goes and in, in, it ties into what was being discussed pre in previous episodes about how straight men basically are not allowed to have a personality god damn it like they like straight men can't do or say anything without it being like Oh, that's sus. Oh, that's sassy. That's zesty. That's this. That's that. And it's like that's gay. The projection part of toxic masculinity is when women and um, you know other people in your life are projecting onto you like, oh, you don't do this, don't do that, don't do this because though that's feminine. That's this. Boy, and that. so well, men don't cry. Yeah, men don't do this. Men don't do that. Men are supposed to do this. And we already talked about the fact that they're supposed to is some bullshit. And so that's kind of part of that where it's like, well, what you said was some bullshit. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, and then of course in the gay community, it becomes a thing where it's like, I'll say for myself that I am still unfortunately looming from a lot of the effects of toxic masculinity that was projected onto me and that I'm still trying to shape. Um, For example, um, a lot of people when they meet me or people who know me, you know, have told me like, oh, you're not one of the feminine gays you're not one of the girls you you know your voice is a little deeper you dress more masculine whatever that means you know and so and is dressing more masculine just wearing a t-shirt and sweatpants exactly just wearing a t-shirt and sweatpants and whatever like that but i've gotten things like all my life where people pretty much you know there are people of course who have seen my more feminine side but for the most part I've always the been told queen. yeah I've always been told that like I'm more of the masculine type of guy and so because of that I have felt the need to kind of live up to that and so I've stopped myself from fully embracing mm-hmm. my own femininity because I'm concerned about like what other people are going to say about it like mm-hmm. um, oh, the perfect example I was talking to Gerald yesterday about it where when I go out to clubs and stuff, I still hesitate to kind of dance the way I want to mm. because I'm so busy trying to like uphold this uphold image that other this people put masculine you. image of like, yeah. oh, okay, so when I'm in the club, I'm gonna just have my drink and just do like a little. That's all I'm gonna really do. That's, and that's what was happening in um like middle school, high school at the dance. Yeah, dances, when, in, natu- when like, in actuality, it's like for people who know me, like I'm a full on professional dancer. Like I do eight counts. Listen, let me tell you something. We, we could be in a store, in a, in a Walmart, whatever, and this nigga, if he hears a song or something, he'll just bust out just... 
Yeah. The whole and it's crazy like, because it's like I, 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 I be wanting to do. I be wanting to like, I, I, like even though I am trash at twerking, I'm not a twerker. But, but that I be off, wanting to. Like, I be want. <laughs> I be wanting like sometimes like I'm out when I'm out I be like ooh I, you know, I want to get a little ratchet and do a little whatever whatever but like, it's, it's just fun yeah but the, of course like I said the toxic masculinity that I'm still trying to kind of get get the rest of it out of me takes over sometimes it's like oh don't do that because then you know people are gonna look at you like you're feminine they're gonna look at you like a bottom they're gonna look at you like this. and I shouldn't have those thoughts mm-hmm. because that's part of the toxic masculinity conversation yeah. where it's like if you you're, you're looked at as less than if you're a bottom because when you're looked at as a bottom you're looked at as being feminine unless you're a masculine bottom like if you're like a big swole gym nigga and you're a bottom oh they praise you for that but if you are somebody who likes to come in a club and you got a you know nice slim waist and you wear crop tops and you you know shake your ass and you twerk and you all like (laughs) you know like (laughs) then that's when they look at you like oh he gotta be femme he must be a bottom he must be da 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 and that that used to stop me too yeah um because I I like wearing crop tops sometimes yeah um I like wearing butterfly shorts sometimes um this camera shit but (laughs) I because, like, a lot of um, hetero um, humans they're growing up would be like, oh, I wouldn't have known it until you started speaking. And I was like, is that a compliment? Like, what are you trying to say? Mm-hmm. Um, but I would also, like, try not to be as feminine because I, I in my mind and what I've seen in society in the, in the gay community is that if you're feminine, that means you don't like ass mm-hmm. you just like dick mm-hmm. and I'm like but I'm versatile mm-hmm. I like both mm-hmm. and like I like feminine niggas too yeah like I like I, I don't know if I like pretty masculine dudes I don't know if I like that but I like I like a good I like a bitch queen mm-hmm. or a queen bitch queen or queen yeah and I think that's part of the thing that you just mentioned where it's like there are because the bottoms will not let you top them if they feel like you're too feminine. That's true. And that, to me, that's another part of toxic masculinity. And of course, everybody has the thing where they like to say, oh, it's a preference. That's my preference. I like a man, a more masculine man. And the, the, the there's, there's a really thin line between preference and you know, exacerbating toxic masculinity. There's a, there's a, a very fine line, and I feel like a lot of people dance that line the river dance. Yeah, really on you know on a regular Shout basis, they kind of like tiptoe on that tightrope of mm-hmm. is this truly a preference of yours, or is it only something that you like because of society and the way that mm-hmm. you've been brought up? You know what I mean? Because you know, I can't imagine there being any other reason besides like you being conditioned psychologically to think like, oh, because this person has feminine qualities, qualities that would previously be associated with a woman, that's the reason why I don't want this person to top me. To me, that's a a psychological thing. It's something that you would not be thinking if it hadn't been imprinted in you in some way. Yeah, you know, because you're brought up like that. Because you're brought up to, you know, boys play football. Mm, Yeah, girls play with dolls. Yeah, you're brought. You're you're raised to think those things. So when it sits with you and you're not. When a boy has a doll, it's called an action figure. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay, it's a doll. Yeah, and and so that's the thing where it's like when you are and, and and not disrespecting anyone by saying this, but just saying that when you when your mind is not fortified enough to oh um, me. I'm like daddy. <laughs> when your mind is not fortified enough to be able to release that conditioning and think for yourself and come up with your own mind and your own thoughts then that stuff will stay with you and you will be it, it's so deeply ingrained that you are pretty much tricking yourself into believing that that's your own thought yeah like <clears throat> these people really think like oh this is this is how I think this is my thought know, like, and, 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 and nine times out of ten it's not your thought it's, it's a yeah, thought it's, that it's was put into imprinted you imprinted into you imprinted into you from the time that you've been a child but then, like, and you know as life goes on <clears throat> 
well, for me as life um, was going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow. Well, um, as life was going on, I started to just be myself. Mm -hmm. And there were countless examples of um, like positive feedback I got from just being myself. Yeah. Um, which I think I'm like, I float in between feminine and masculine. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I'm in the middle, but then I just kind of go like that. I don't know. That's something. Um, but so it took me some time to get there. But when I was going through that, I picked up that, okay, I can be myself. Mm -hmm. I'm happier. Oh, I'm happier. I'm so oh my much God. happier. I love this. Let me continue this. Yeah, it's it, you're, it, it's like, such more. It it. it it's a, I, I would say like a few years ago, I wouldn't have worn this outfit out, mm -hmm. outside just during the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to the club, but now I'm just like, who gonna say something? Yeah, who gonna check? Who, who gonna, gonna do me something? <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's the thing too. Like that's one of the things I realized as well. Like once I started to kind of just be myself and embrace the things that I wanted to do and who I wanted to be, I realized that A, I was much happier mm -hmm. and B, I just happened to naturally attract more people. Like people gravitated yeah. more towards me once they, when, when someone can see that you're being your authentic and true self. It's the authenticity that's attractive. It attracts you all the time. It, 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 it brings people to you because they're like, wow, like this person is really authentic. This and they live in the And they live in the truth. And, they, and, and it's the energy that you exude when you're being yourself. Yeah. So me getting to a point where I'm getting rid of the toxic masculinity in my mindset where I'm like, you know what? Because a lot of times when I do something, I'm, I, I, I kind of stopped and I think to myself, I said, am I doing this because I want to? Mm -hmm. Or am I doing this because of toxic masculinity? Am I doing this because the rest of society is going to see me as less of a man mm -hmm. if I don't? Yeah. You know, and I've gotten really good at like s b saying like, I don't really like this. Yeah. No, I ain't gonna do that. Mm -hmm. Instead of just going along with things, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of like a floaty person, mm -hmm. I go with the flow a lot. But if I don't like something, I ain't gonna do it no more. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like I used to be so concerned about like, like I didn't want to disrupt the energy. Even something as simple as like me posting like a picture or something for like Hump Day. Like, I would always feel the need to put, like, hashtag verse or hashtag, like, to oh. let people know that, like, oh, I'm not a bottom, I'm verse. But that is part of toxic masculinity mm -hmm. sometimes because it's like, I shouldn't have to explain no. myself. It's because it's like, if I want to post my ass, I want to post my ass. Mm -hmm. I don't, even if I was a full top and I don't like getting fucked at all, I, I, if I want to post my ass, I'm post my ass. I so, think, like, if you look at my other Twitter, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I feel like you would probably see more ass things on there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just because of um, my lack of energy that I put towards taking pictures. <laughs> mm. And I feel like it's, it's easier for me just to put my pants down real quick. Boom. There's a picture. And it's the opposite for me because I feel like you see more dick on my page because mm -hmm. I it's easier for me to take a dick picture than it is to take an ass picture. Ass pictures are so difficult for me to take. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Like, I go through hell trying to take an ass picture. And so I'm like, oh, but my dick is in front of me. I can, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. I can just take as many as I want to. Mm -hmm. But with my ass, I have to be like, uh, turning around, finding the right angle because, you know, my ass don't sit up as high as I want to. So I got to make sure that, because even though my ass is fat. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> It don't sit it up high, so there are, the certain, recoil there are certain on angles thing. where it look flat, and I don't mm -hmm. like that. So okay. it's, it's, I go through hell so I can ask pictures, so it's just it's, it's much easier to take a dick picture. Okay. And, just, and then on top of that, most of my videos that I posted have been of me topping because that's naturally just what I've done more of. Mm -hmm. But anyway, my point is, is that like when it comes to when it comes to toxic masculinity, I feel like most of it is unfortunately in the black community mm -hmm. um, because even something as simple as like a bromance in the white community that's a very normal thing where it's like two white guys mm -hmm. arms wrapped around each other kiss each other on the cheek i love you bro da, 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 da. that's a very normal thing in the white community, in the black community whereas in the black community if you do something like that it's Im immediately you have to say pause no homo yeah the whole pause no homo thing and it's very much like how was you showing affection toward another man? 
suspect or gay or whatever yeah, like that. It's, it's like not even it's not even a gay thing. Especially because it's like that. Like, especially like I can imagine like this being a, a, a man that you grew up with. Like yeah. you went to school with each other, and y'all are now in your like mid to late twenties or even early thirties, whatever. You can say that you love that person. Yeah, That's someone who's been you in your life for a long time. Y'all have you been can through, express your love been through a person. lot of stuff together. So what is wrong with you hugging them and, you know, expressing that you love them and all that? Like, there's nothing the wrong with that. And I feel, like, I feel like toxic masculinity stops a lot of men from doing that. Showing affection to their male friends and to their male family members and to and to people who and mean I mean, something to them. It stops them from showing affection to, to many People. Yeah, and, 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 and like I was saying at the beginning male, of this conversation, people. toxic masculinity stops a lot of straight men from having any type of personality. Because like, imagine like, like, don't let a straight man laugh a certain way or dance yeah. a certain way or whatever. Immediately, everybody's looking Beyonce at them like it's you're unique. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so unique. I cannot wait, and hopefully, I'll see it. Who knows? I cannot wait to see the day when toxic masculinity takes a back seat, mm. you know, and just like, you know, more people are, and I feel like we're slowly it's, getting there. Yeah. Slowly. Very it's not slowly. going at the pace that I would like. Like it to Atlanta go. traffic slowly. Oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're slowly getting to. Six o'clock. Yeah. On a Friday afternoon. Exactly. That's how slowly it's going, but it's going. During Labor Day weekend. You know, we're, Girl. Well, that's not moving at all now, is it? <laughs> ah, it's itching. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like we're slowly getting there, but it's just like it's, it's going to take a lot longer time. for more people to kind of like get to a point where they're able to realize that both the masculinity and femininity in us is beautiful. And yeah. it's, 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 it's a part of our entire personality. It's a part of who we are. Having both testosterone and estrogen we in your do. body Everyone is... Everyone does. Yeah, like it, it, it's something that is there and it happens and it's something that I feel like people... I just, at the end of the day, the point I'm trying to make is I just wish people would stop trying to make it seem like masculine good, feminine bad. That's what I'm sick of seeing. I'm sick of people putting masculinity on this pedestal as if it's something to aspire toward and right. something to praise and, 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 and be overtly proud of where it's like, oh yeah, I'm super masculine and I've got muscles and I'm, I've got a, a beard and I've got this and that, like all these physical attributes that make you masculine. And then, you I'm know, glad you did the quotes. Good job. You know, and, and it's like, Let's get let's let's get away from that. Yeah, like that's just, that is so whatever you tired. like, just it like is it. such a tired because it prevents you from being yourself. Yeah, and for for you to be able to experience the world without that. Oh my lens. god! Exactly. Like you know, like, you know how much people don't do because they're so worried about right. their their, like their their fragile masculinity. At the end of the day, the moral of the story is. Just, you know, fuck be, what you were taught. Yeah, be be yourself. Enjoy who you are. Embrace who you are, and you know, do your thug bizzle. And for the women out there, like, let's try to be a little more considerate and sensitive. Because the thing about it is that another aspect of toxic masculinity is double standard, mm. where a lot of women are able to be so judgmental towards men because women are given much more freedom to embrace both their masculinity and femininity, mm -hmm. you know? Even going back to like, you know, someone like Aaliyah, you know, where she was able to, you know, wear the baggy pants and the bandanas and this and this and that. And the hair is still done. Yeah, so and that was lipstick. okay because it was like, okay, cool. She can do that. And then as she got older and she transitioned to wearing like sexier stuff, she can do that too. Same thing in the dance community. You know, female dancers can come into a dance class with heels on, midriff, little bralettes and stuff, and that's cool. But then they can also go into a dance class with sneakers and jeans and this and that, mm -hmm. and it's still considered cool. But if a male dancer comes into a dance class with a crop top on, it immediately shifts people's mindset to assuming that that dancer is gay or that yeah, they're feminine like, no. or whatever. And it's like, no, because... Crop tops are actually comfortable. History shows that like straight men used to wear crop tops in no the eighties. No problem. 
No you problem. watch several stuff. Fresh Prince of Bel Air, mm-hmm. um, Nightmare on Elm Street, when Johnny Depp had his um, is prop Fame top, a good like, example. Fame would be a good example okay. too. Even though I think some of the some of the dancers, some of the male dancers in Fame were gay, but yeah. still though, like it was a trend that wasn't considered a gay thing. It was just a, it was a trend. Yeah, and so I feel like that's another thing is that women, because they have the license to openly express their femininity and masculinity um, openly and freely, and you know, just as as much as they would like to mm-hmm. it's easier for them to be able to judge men and be like oh that's you shouldn't do that men shouldn't smoke hookah and men shouldn't dance and oh, yeah. men shouldn't when go to brunch I was like, men shouldn't the, so the, if you the, smoke the hookah gay the type of stuff that, that a lot of these women say is gay and that is zesty and sassy and whatever like that I'm just like good god and, but I would say that what it's a not stressful it's, life it must be to be a straight man like good what it's not just women but it's also gay men too that do that gay men do that too yeah but the, the whole hookah thing um and Saucy Santana was yeah, one of the ones saying like, like oh yeah no you gay agree with you that. yeah <laughs> and that's unfortunate yeah what do you mean if you smoke hookah you gay but I don't I feel like Saucy Santana was maybe like trolling, but I don't know if Saucy really believes that. But I don't know Saucy. I love Saucy's music, though. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. but we do have a lot of gay men in the community who they want certain straight men to be gay so bad that mm-hmm. they, every little thing they do, they're like, hmm. oh, that's, that's suspect. That's a little whatever. Let me get closer and see if I can get a hug from him real quick. Yeah, and that's going to tell me that he's gay. You know, it's like, uh-huh. geez, Louise. Like, and, 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 and because, about? like, just like with anything else, like, yeah, there are cases where you're probably right, but for the most part, let's not make that assumption immediately. We shouldn't jump straight no. to that because that is part of toxic masculinity where we see a man doing something that he's so not supposed to be doing and smoking hookah or getting it, his nails done yeah it, yeah getting your nails done or you know so it, it immediately I'll be like bitch it's just pain yeah it immediately just completely I don't know it just it, 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 it just causes so many issues and it, it, it causes unnecessary stress on both for both parties yeah. because the, most of society focuses on their own happiness oh for sure I mean and it. instead of other people's happiness where it's like Oh, you being more masculine will make me happy versus, bitch, me being myself makes me happy. So how about you do you, Mm -hmm. I do me, we both do what makes ourselves happy and mind our business. Yeah. Like if you are some, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that's the problem where people like, people like to project stuff onto other people because they want everybody else in the world to, um... What's the word I'm looking for? They want everybody else in the world to conform, confo- to choose to conform to what makes them happy. I got you, babe. That's Thank great. you. I appreciate mm-hmm. you. Yeah. You're a real one. <laughs> um, <laughs> they want everyone else in the, in the world to conform to what they like, so that they're more comfortable. They're more comfortable, and because they because they, they can live in their happiness and be like, okay, mm-hmm. well, I don't have to be. Yeah. Uh, I don't have to feel uncomfortable. But like, exactly. I think when you feel uncomfortable, you learn more. <laughs> you. And you, it opens you, become, you up to so yes, much more. I know um, I have encountered people and family members who they were kind of on the side of like, mm, are you gay? Mm. Um, but no, like when you know someone who's opposite of you, who, that you have op, like you have opposing thoughts about or whatever, negative thoughts about, and you actually get to know them, then you then you find out, oh. One, you're still a human being. Mm-hmm. Two, you're still my cousin. You're still my brother. You're still my nephew. You're still da da da. Um, and 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 you can see that. Oh, okay, you're just still a regular person. Like you, you, what you do actually doesn't affect me at all. No, and I just like you. I just like you being you. Mm-hmm. And that's it. But yeah. I just want people to just live in their truth and be happy, or be able to, because the society does not create a world that, or create a society that um, allows makes people us feel to, safe enough to do yeah, that, to, to be ourselves. Be yourself. Yeah. yeah, which is that's, it's so sad. It's so sad that we live in a world like that where we have to constantly 
you know, and then even even worse than in America and other countries and stuff where being gay is actually illegal. And yeah, stuff like that. Where it's like, Which, imagine, I'm imagine gonna say something controversial, not controversial, but Chick Fil A. Count your days, bitch. <laughs> Count your days, bitch. It, I mean, it's always just been such a very sad thought to think like, wow, people are being murdered, murdered, mistreated, you know, incarcerated, all just because of who they are. Yeah. And all because of who they want to love. Their existence. And who they, you know, like, that is crazy to me. Because yeah. because I was, we were talking about this, um, maybe like a week ago or something like that, but it must, it's really crazy how someone's existence can bother you that much. So much. That you feel the need to, like, take Like, they're not even, negative they're not, action they have toward nothing them. to do with you. They're not saying anything crazy to you. They're not harming they're you in any by you. way. They're in front of you in the gas station line, giving somebody else a compliment, and then walking away. Yeah, and but you're you so and you, bothered. Like, you're so bothered by someone's mere existence, and and, and nine times out of ten, they're bothered. Crazy. They're bothered because they're jealous that they can't fully be who they want to be. Probably. That's what it is. Like, a, lot, a lot of times, it's, it's, it's envy mm. because they'll see somebody who's like living in their life out loud. You know, especially people who are who are seen as being too much and being extra. Mm. Like if you see a gay man who. Wears the nails and the makeup and the hair and the and the outfits that are just you know this and this and that. People are like, oh, they do too much. Like those are the gays that do too much. No, this motherfucker got up and they put their shit on. They looked in the mirror and they said, "Bitch, I look the fuck good." And they walked outside and they and they walked into the world because they do look the fuck good. Yeah, they Everyone walked into the world and said, "I'm gonna do me. I don't give a fuck about what anybody else has to say." And I love that. And you, That's unfortunately, attractive. are projecting your envy onto them because you're upset that there are things that you want to do that you can't do because you're allowing society to hold you back. Mm -hmm. There are things that you want to do. There are things that you want to say. There are things you want to wear. There are places you want to go that you are stopping yourself from experiencing because you're too worried about what your parents and what your, you know, co-workers or whatever is going to say about what you're, do what you're doing, where you're going, and how you're living your life. And that is where a lot of people's anger comes from is because that envy turns into anger because it's just like, damn, they out here, like, how, how, like, how dare you be yourself? How yeah. dare you express how dare yourself? You, you get to be yourself and be happy? Exactly. How dare no, you? No, I'm going to try to ruin this for you. I'm going to ruin every, I'm going to take every chance possible to ruin that for yeah, you. So that if, that's if, so if crazy. I'm going to be miserable, if I'm going to be in the closet, if I'm going to be, you know, um, Restricted in any way, you are too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a way to make you feel the same way I do. So that it's, 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 it's very much if I ain't got a job, ain't nobody got no job. It's very that's much crazy. that. That's crazy. Why would you? Why would, <laughs> like, girl, somebody gotta work. <laughs> yeah, I just wanna give a little slaps out. Just be like, get it together, right? Wait, that's the girl. Pull yourself together. <laughs> Sign the or fucking like, contract. Yeah, the more the more arose. <laughs> Sign the fucking contract. She slapped the fuck out of him. <laughs> it always gives me how stiff it is, though. It's like it's yeah. not like a. It's like, like the hand is like. <laughs> it's not like the regular open palm. Oh, it's very erect. <laughs> Funny. Uh, but anyway, yes. Okay, so we can literally go on and on about this topic, but <laughs> it, time. You know, time will not allow us to do that. So. <sighs> Yeah, we're pushing it. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and just wrap this up. Um, and I'm sure that this topic will probably come up mm -hmm. in other episodes and different segments course, and stuff like that throughout sure. because it's just something that we can't escape, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, not like yet. I said, I look, yeah, not yet. I look forward to the day where we can finally escape toxic masculinity and allow people to just be. Yeah. For the love of God. But until then, I've been Rajiv. I have been... I think today I've been a little bit of Haley mm, today. Okay. Yeah, I think it's giving Haley. I've been Haley. Um, shout out to y'all. Hmm. Okay, and we will <laughs> <laughs> we will see you guys in the next episode. Oh wait. So. Oh wait. You, oh, because you put the Instagram thing. Yeah. Things like Got it. Yeah. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Let's have us a good